Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is live coverage of theCUBE's AWS reInvent 2017. Two sets, a lot of action. Day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Keith Townsend. Our next guest, CUBE alumni, is Yaron Haviv, who's the founder and CTO of Guazio, hot new startup. And uh, big news coming next week, a big announcement. Um, and following their work, Yaron, great to, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back on. Hi, thanks. And you got a new shirt. We'll share the yeah, logo that's there. In, uh, Nucleo, that's our new uh, serverless framework, which is open source, uh, really kicks ass. It's about, you know, 100 times faster than Amazon Lambda, and uh, we're announcing it next it's week. it's 200 times faster. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to shame. So you're <laughs> setting the bar, you kind of cover it. There's a mercy rule. Yeah, we, we do about, you know, we're doing 400,000 events per second on a single process. They do about 2,000. Yeah. Like most of the open source projects around the same ballpark. So, yeah. so you're, you're on, I, I got to get this off the bat and then we can have a, 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 a uh, nice discussion afterwards. Mm -hmm. A pleasant discussion. Yep. Serverless. Yep. Let's first define what that means. Because there's a bunch of, I can take Nucleo, install it in my data center, run it, am I serverless? Yeah, you know, so we, you know, I'm in the serverless working group. And for CNCF, right. Yeah, and for CNCF, and we had a hot debate between the sort of the open source startups doing what is really called sort of function as a service, and Amazon and Chris and others uh, trying to push the notion of serverless, which is serverless stands for serverless, meaning you don't manage server. And the way we position Nucleus is actually both, because on one end you can consume it as an open source project, very easy to download single Docker instruction and it's up and running, unlike some other solutions. And on the other end, you could consume it as something within the Iguazi data platform that has all the, if there is a slide from Amazon which I really like, which is about serverless, and they show serverless is attached to Kinesis, DynamoDB, S3, and uh, Athena, okay? Four services of data that attach to Lambda. Iguazio has API compatibility with Kinesis, with DynamoDB, with S3, and Presto, which is Athena as well. So exactly the same four data services, the data position as part of the service ecosystem are supported on our platform. So we provide one platform, all the data services that Amazon has, or at least the interesting ones, serverless functions which are 100 times faster, few more tricks that they don't have on that sleeve. Right, so what is the definition then? Just in a pithy way for someone out there who's learning about serverless, what is it? What's the definition? So the notion is, as a developer, you're sort of avoiding IT. You go, you open a nice portal, you write a function, or you write your function in a GitHub repository somewhere, you click on a button and it gets deployed somewhere. Right now you know where it's going to get deployed, in the future you may not know. You got to set up an EC2 instance, get that prepared. It's not really an EC2 instance. No, the old instance. way, the old way. Yeah. The old way was, right? Yeah, the old play though were infrastructure guys building your EC2 instance, security layers, malware, yeah. et cetera. You go develop on your laptop and then you need to go and conform and all the um, you know, continuous integration play was very complicated. Serverless comes inherently with scale out, with auto scaling, with continuous integration. You have versioning for the code. You could downgrade a version, you could upgrade a version. So essentially it's a package version of a cloud native solution. That's a general idea. Yeah. So I can do that, if I'm doing it and managing myself, it's functions as a service, and if, if I'm doing it and it's provided as a cloud provider, as a server, as a, as a service, it's serverless. There's none of my operations team is dealing with servers, it's You're writing just a writing function. code and just go. Yeah. You're writing a function, push commit. You know, you should play with Nucleo, not just with other yeah. things, but you'll see you're writing a function, you even have a built-in editor, you write, you push deploy, and it's already deployed somewhere. That's all right, all. so give us the perspective before you move on, on the game, what the impact is to a developer. Apples to oranges, I mean, old way you described it, new ways, sounds easier. What's the impact? How much, is it time, money? What, I mean, can you quantify and I think the give biggest some... challenge, and you guys write about it, okay? The biggest challenge for businesses is to transform. I saw an interesting sentence. It's not about digital transformation, it's about businesses that need to work in a digital world, okay? 
because again, it, most of the, com of the communication of customers to businesses is becoming digital, okay? Whether it's today through mobile apps, tomorrow through Alexa, okay? As Luke, as Luke Cerny said, it's all software. Yeah. Your business is the software. Yeah, but it's all about interactive, really, okay? So, as a business, I always position, there are two things you need to take care of as a business. One is increasing the, the uh, revenue, and that's by en engaging more customers and increasing the revenue per customer, okay? How do you engage more customer? Through digital through services, okay? Whether it's Twitters or providing a new service for your web portal, et cetera. And the next thing is how do you generate more revenue from a customer is by showing recommendations on you know, yeah. what he wants to buy. Providing more value. <laughs> right, and the other aspect is operational efficiency. How do you automate your operations to reduce the cost? So you know, Amazon's use robots to do the shipping and packing so their margins can now uh, you know, uh, be, be lower. So the general idea is both those things, reducing cost is becoming more and more dependent on automation, which is digital, and reducing, increasing revenue become more about customer engagement, which is digital again. Okay, so now you're a traditional enterprise, and you have your exchange to worry about, and all the legal stuff and the mainframes, but if you're not going to work on the transformation piece, you're going to die because some other startup is going to build insurance company which is sort of uh, you know, agile and, and all that. So you made an interesting comment earlier when you were talking about Nucleo and, and integrating the functions that, that really matter, the services that matter. Amazon releases 800 new services uh, a year. Actually 1,300. Oh, I'm sorry, 1,300. I, I don't want this time less, no? They, right now they're at 1130 and they expect to be 1,500, 1,700 by the end of the year. Two years ago it was like 750, and then the year before that was like 600. So is that, is that an indicator as to Amazon's leading this race between the big, I don't know, three, four cloud providers? Rack and stack them for us. What, how do we assess the it's capability? It's a matter of, of mentality, okay? Bezos thinks like a supermarket, okay? Just like an Amazon market. I could say I need a, you know, cover Bunch for my bananas. iPad, yeah. I'm going to get 100 covers for my iPad. No one really, you know, I need to now choose, okay? So their strategy will put dozens of services that do similar things. One is better at this, one is better at that. We control the market, we'll sell more. We have a different approach. We do fewer services, but each one sort of kicks ass, okay? Each one is much better, much faster, much better engineered. Okay, this is also why we have one data platform that provides 10 different data APIs and not 10 different individual data platforms. All right, so let's talk about the scoreboard. So, okay, even though they might be thinking of supermarket, you got Amazon, Azure, Microsoft, and Google. I okay. look at some of the data. I mean, Microsoft's been international for a while from their MSN business. They now have Skype, they got data centers. They know a little bit about cloud. Amazon's got a lot of more services. They support multiple versions of things. Google is kind of non-existent on the scale of comprehensiveness. So, yeah. is and it a game? And you look at their uh, serverless functions, by the way? No, no, but in terms of new stuff, TensorFlow and serverless. No, but serverless, they only support Node.js, they have very few triggers, and it's still defined as beta. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the point. I mean, so people are touting, I wrote this in my Forbes article, they're touting like a feature and there's a lot more that needs to get done. So the question I have for you is, there's a level of comprehensiveness that you need now. And I know you guys spent a lot of time building your solution. We've talked about this in our last Cube interview. So the question is, the whole MVP cost of minimum viable product is great when you're building a consumer app for an iPhone, but when you start talking about a platform and now cloud, question to you is, is there a level of completeness bar to be hurdled over? for a, a legit cloud or cloud I, player? I don't What's think your you need a thousand services to build a good cloud, but you do need a bunch of services, okay? Now the way that we see the world, and like Satya, okay, which is there is the core cloud, but there is sort of the belt around it, which is what he calls intelligent cloud. We, we, we would define ourselves as the intelligent cloud, so if someone is building a machine learning model and needs a uh, five year worth of data, I need to just do crawling on top of it. It's not really an interesting problem. It's commoditized, lots of CPU power, you know, object storage. But the bigger, the bigger challenge is doing the inferencing close to the edge. This is what needs to happen in real time. So there, you need fewer services, but there need to be more real time. Smarter integration. 
Yes. It, to do that, right? I mean, you, need, you have density problems, you don't have a lot of room to put 100 servers, it needs to be a lot more integrated. You know, look at Azure Stack, okay? You know, the slogan is consistency, okay? Look at a slide that shows which Azure services are part of Azure Stack, less than 20%, okay? Because it, it's a lot more complicated to take technologies that were designed as hyperscale and put them on few servers. Yeah. So how? How do customers figure it out? Yeah. What does yeah. the customer do? It's yeah, all mind binding. I look at that and, and you, 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 I love the concept of core services and then value around those core services. What are those core services that a cloud must have before I start to invest in that, in that cloud provider strategy? Yeah, so the point again, there is a lot of legacy that you need to, to grab with you, especially someone like Amazon, okay? So they have to have VMs and migration services from Oracle, et cetera, okay? But let's assume I'm a startup and building a new cloud native applications. Do I need any of that? No, I can probably do with containers. I don't really need VMs. I can use something like Kubernetes. I can use NoSQL databases, you know, maybe some MySQL for, you know, so I could redesign my application differently with a lot fewer services. The problem for someone like Amazon, in order to grow and be a supermarket, you have to have 10 of everything, okay? But again, if I'm a more, someone that focuses on new applications, I don't need so many services and so much legacy. Well, I will say one thing. You can call them a supermarket, use that retail analogy. I buy that analogy only in the extent that you used it. But if that's the case, everyone's hungry for food and they're the only supermarket in town. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully okay. maybe have less uh, uh, stuff on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone else is like a little hot dog stand <laughs> compared to the supermarket. I mean, Amazon is crushing it. Your thoughts? Yeah. But again, I think... I say that, but are they kicking ass? I mean, 40% yeah, growth Obviously, Amazon 18 million? is kicking ass, but I think Azure is ramping up faster. Uh, Amazon is generating more, comp more uh, alienation among people that they're starting to compete with, you know, uh, like Azure's well, copying Amazon. Right, but they have a different they're angle. They, they know how to sell to enterprises, okay? They already have the foot in the door for Office 365. Right. I've talked to a customer, okay, and I thought, we're going Azure. I say, why? He said, oh, you know, 365. He said, we already certified the security with, for the 365. For us to use Azure, it's a yeah. so the That's another service. Yeah, right, yeah. Up, right up until that next breach. Right, so the, uh, you know, the guys owning IT, it's easier for them to go to Azure. The developers want Amazon. Because yeah. Amazon is sexier. This was a question, we, I know we got a break, but I want to ask this to you. We, we, talked, we debated this on the intro segment with the analyst. Question. IT buyers have been driven by a top-down, CIO-driven, CXO-driven, waterfall, whatever you want to call it, old way. With developers now at the driver's seat, with all this kind of serverless function as a service coming around the corner very fast, are developers driving the buying decisions or not, or is it still IT? The budget's still there, they want to eliminate labor, they want more efficiencies, are you so seeing it, it yet, will it happen? Yeah, because we're just in the middle, okay? Because on one end, we're an infrastructure, but we're an infrastructure consumed by developers, okay? So we keep on having those challenges within the uh, accounts themselves, you know? IT doesn't get what we're doing, you know? Serverless, you know, and uh, databases yeah, you're, you're as a service. You're a foreign and, language. You know, and they, because they like to build stuff, you know? They want to take the Nutanix and take yeah. 100 services on top of it, and it will take them two years to integrate, by that time, sort of the business already moved somewhere else. So, so IT could be a dinosaur like the mainframe. Right, but I think the smart, the smart ITs understand that they need to adopt cloud instead of fight it and move the line further up the stack, okay? And, and that's sort of the, the thing that we're trying to provide to them. You know, why are, you know, when you're building stuff, you're buying EMC storage, okay? You're not just taking disk. So why do you focus on this low level of block storage when you're buying infrastructure? Why not buy database as a service? You know, and then you don't need all the hassle. You know, streaming as a service, serverless as a service, and then you don't need all that stack. Yaron, you're, you should be our guest analyst. We're too busy <laughs> building a company. We're going to see you yes. next week in Austin for uh, KubeCon. Congratulations Thanks. on your success. I know you guys have worked hard. Yaron Javi, founder and CTO in Aguazio. You're going to hear a lot about these guys. Smart team. Let's see if they don't, they either go big or go home. I think you're going to go big. Congratulations. Yeah. More coverage Thanks. here at AWS reInvent after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Keith Townsend. <laughs>